ओके हेलो एवरीवन गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू दिस लाइव सेशन द फर्स्ट लाइव सेशन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर कोर्स फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ न्यूक्लियर पावर जनरेशन we are supposed to have uh, more live sessions in future but uh, this is the first opportunity for us to interact with the uh, the readers or learners for this course though in virtual mode but at least some sort of interaction now uh, in this uh, just uh, before i start responding to the queries maybe i can give a briefing about this particular course this is actually a rerun kind of course means the this is not the first time this course is being offered the lectures that uh, you are able to see those were recorded uh, uh, earlier not in this particular year rather when it was offered for the first time and uh, now this year and even in the last year also this course is being offered in rerun mode where the earlier recorded videos will be um, provided but of course all the assignment and question papers will be newly prepared and uh, to respond to your queries we are having this session now uh, i would like to say hi to mr marinder singh and also a big thank you because in uh, earlier live sessions not only for this course but in even other courses also sometimes we have seen that uh, not too many uh, students join or respond um, but uh, he has uh, joined the session and also has sent uh, several very interesting queries so i would like to respond to his queries first regarding the course uh, we are already into the fifth module i think we have completed the fifth module and so we have already covered decent uh, amount of uh, material decent amount of uh, content like you already know uh, quite a bit about the phenomenon of radioactivity the fundamentals of the course like neutron nucleus interactions different kind of neutron nucleus interactions and uh, answer to the important questions that are already uh, known to you like uh, fission and fusion what are the different kinds of nuclear reactions that we are talking about how we can induce radioactivity to uh, an isotope which is not radioactive in general and then how we use neutrons and not any other kind of particles to induce this artificial radioactivity then what are the different kinds of interaction there you have been introduced to different kind of interaction such as the radiative capture or uh, non fission capture then uh, elastic or inelastic collision we can also have the transfer type of interactions and of course we can have fission interactions and we have got some idea about how to analyze this kind of uh, nuclear reactions nuclear reactions doesn't mean that we are only talking about the fission rather we can also talk about the collisions or other kind of uh, absorption processes non fission capture kind of processes the detailed theory of uh, elastic collision has also been covered and we are gradually entering uh, and also actually we have discussed about the fission process so we are uh, very much into the codes and ready to talk about different kind of reactors like how to control a nuclear reactor then what are the different kinds of reactors etc that will be covered in this uh, middle phase of the course now i shall be responding to the comments from uh, mr maninder uh he has several comments firstly uh, i'd like to talk about the uh, couple of administrative comments that he has mentioned about he has uh, given the title administrative questions one is is the conduct of the examination similar to gate uh, i think uh, i am not the correct person to respond to that but as of i know yes it will be an online exam where you have to go to some designated test centers to write the exams using computers and uh, the exam uh, final exam paper will be somewhat similar to the assignments where you have to respond to either mcq kind of questions or fill in the blanks kind of questions where uh, maybe a numerical questions which you have to solve and you have to write the answer using the correct units in some specified box or maybe you have to select one or more options given as multiple choice option uh, in multiple choice type of questions and are you allowed to bring scrap papers or pencils that actually i don't know that instructions you will be getting from nvtel office before your examinations next um, there are couple of questions about assignments now one question was about assignment 2 in uh, question number 15 he has mentioned that there seems to be a mistake in question 15 um where 3 into 1019 atoms per cc should be read as uh, something i think you want to mean by 3 into 10 19 atoms per cc uh, which is definitely correct but uh, 
I have uh, personally checked my TS have also checked the portal and it seems to be correctly configured in the portal. Means it seems that it is written as three into ten to the power nineteen atoms per cc. It uh, and uh, it will be three into ten to the power nineteen per cc or nineteen atoms per cc. So please solve the problem. I think assignment two completion date is already done. It will be evaluated. It is correctly being represented on the portal at least at our end. Uh, you please uh, let me know maybe by a personal email if you are uh, seeing something else or if your question is something else. But uh, question number three, uh, oh, sorry, question number ten of assignment three. You have talked about the typographical error and you are correct. There was indeed a typographical error in question number ten. Actually, data for two different types of cross sections that got interchanged. And so, whatever options we identify as the correct answer will not be the correct answer. So we have already taken measures for uh, correcting that. And uh, uh, don't be uh, afraid. Everyone, uh, no one will be unnecessarily or uh, illogically be penalized for uh, the mistake from our end. This uh, revolution for this particular question will be done. Thanks a lot for pointing to this one. Now I'm coming to your technical queries, not necessarily in the order that you have mentioned. But uh, I am picking. I am trying to respond to each of them. Like there was one question where you are talking about the boron neutron capture therapy. In the boron neutron capture therapy, you uh, you are asking what happens to kinetic energy of lithium produced in boron neutron capture therapy and ejected alpha particle. Now, if you go to the corresponding uh, portion of my video and pause the screen for a bit, then you will find there. Uh, I don't have the picture in front of me now, but uh, in that pic, uh, in the diagram that I have used during the lecture, you will find that during the reaction, of course, we have production of lithium and alpha particle, but we are also having emission of gamma rays, and a huge portion, ninety to four, ninety four to ninety six percent of the total energy produced are actually getting ejected as this gamma rays. Gamma ray being. Uh, photo sorry gamma rays being just uh, there there is no mass associated to gamma rays because they are electromagnetic radiation only so uh, it will be more like photon energy we can visualize in that way or uh, if you think as electromagnetic radiation then uh, that will be associated with the uh, the wavelength of frequency of that gamma rays which will be determined by the amount of energy it is carrying but uh, the amount of energy associated with the lithium and alpha particles will be extremely small and uh, if anything left out that will uh, uh, that will manifest as the kinetic energy of the alpha particle and this lithium primarily alpha particle which is slightly lighter and has uh, more possibility of carrying uh, energy there was one question in nuclear reactions why we use thermal neutrons why not slow neutrons well thermal neutrons are slow neutrons only um the terminology may be a bit confusing but we are talking about fast neutrons and thermal neutrons but not slow neutrons because just think about what we are defining as thermal neutrons thermal neutrons we are talking about the neutron which is in thermal equilibrium with the surrounding and how we can determine thermal uh, equilibrium when the energy level of the neutron and energy level actually is uh, determined by its uh, kinetic energy or vice versa the, the temperature determines the kinetic energy so when its temperature is the same as the temperature of the surrounding then we say that the neutron is in thermal equilibrium with the surrounding and uh, it is not possible for the neutron to go to even lower temperature level and that's why that is the lowest possible energy level it can reach and commonly we consider 25 or 27 degree celsius as the standard environmental condition but if you are uh, solving any specific problem or dealing with any specific engineering application where your surrounding temperature is something else then the energy level of the thermal neutron also needs to be calculated considering that particular temperature and how to estimate that uh, as per the kinetic theory it will be uh, just a product of the absolute value of the temperature and the Boltzmann constant, using which you can calculate this, like 0.025 electron volt, the value that we have, we are commonly using for thermal neutron, that corresponds to the approximately the 27 degree Celsius that I was mentioning. Even if you are taking 20 degree or 30 degree Celsius, the value will remain almost the same. 
so we uh, the thermal neutron itself is nothing but uh, slow neutrons but uh, as we are defining is as being thermalized with this the surrounding so that um, the term thermal neutron is more logical to be used there was another question which actually is very similar um where it was uh, mentioned actually the next question itself in lecture number 5 uh, one particular instant that we have mentioned about what is meaning of surrounding is the temperature of water or etc is the temperature of the surrounding again the same temperature that i was referring to while talking about the thermal neutron here again we are talking about the temperature that moderator generally is at a higher temperature the more temperature of the moderator can be quite close to the temperature of the fuel or maybe slightly lesser so here again we are talking about the temperature of the surrounding only you have uh, talked about a particular instant of lecture number 5 and uh, mentioned about what is radioactive capture well i was also a bit confused because the radioactive capture generally we don't call we use the terminology radiative capture or non fission radiative capture uh, uh so i had to go back to the particular lecture initially went through the video that particular instant and around and uh, uh if i have understood correctly i have uh, mentioned radiative capture only then i went uh, to the youtube link and saw that and uh, there i found uh, the problem or the source of confusion the auto generated captions they are actually that radiative capture has been written as radioactive capture which probably is creating this confusion actually if you call it radioactive capture it is uh, not technically wrong because all these are radioactive reactions but uh, in true sense we should call it radiative capture only and uh, that's the term that i would also like to uh, use and again i am sorry for uh, creating this confusion there was uh, this error in that auto generated uh, captions where it is written as radioactive capture Uh, another question was there why do we represent elastic collision as x n n y and why not x n n x as during elastic collision of course it is not changing well uh, you are correct in your sense x n n y we are referring to or we are writing just to uh, maybe you can say to separate out uh, the product and reactant of course if you are talking about say collision where the an elastic collision reaction where the neutron is colliding something like say an uranium particle or uh, maybe just uh, water uh, or uh, anything else then uh, or maybe just i talk about deuterium then of course uh, that x is uh, a deuterium and y is also deuterium but sometimes we prefer writing uh, y because though both are same nucleus both are same nuclei but their energy levels will be different because the amount of energy the neutron is losing during this collision will be transferred to that particular nuclei and uh, but of course you are correct nucleus point of view both are same as we are talking about elastic collision only still we uh, quite commonly use this x and y uh, just to be consistent with the other kind of reactions as well where there is a change from product to the sorry from the reactant to the product nuclei there was one question what happens to the proton new electron and uh, neutrino after beta decay of neutron well during beta decay of neutron we are talking about uh, we can visualize the beta decay beta minus decay that is that is a neutron getting converted to a proton and an electron but uh, there is no ex- explicit proton that may be appearing here because uh, you just visualize that we are talking about a reaction where we are having a heavier nuclei or heavier nucleus rather which has lots of protons and neutrons and among those neutrons one of them is getting converted to or uh, or breaking into one proton electron combination so there is increase in the number of protons by one there is reduction in the number of neutron by one so the proton that actually stays inside the nucleus only only on neutron getting converted to a proton the electron that comes out because electron can't stay inside the nucleus that has to come out and uh, now think carefully as there is increase in the number of proton by 1 in the nucleus then the number of orbital electron should also increase by 
in order to make the atom electrically neutral so it is possible for that electron to uh, go as, into a suitable orbit and uh, make the atom electrically neutral or if uh, generally it's not that just a single atom that is present in a structure it can uh, go to the orbits of some other atoms as well and the atoms may exchange this uh, additional electron to make the entire thing uh, electrically neutral the neutrino will have some amount of kinetic energy but uh, generally the mass of neutrino being ex extremely negligible quite often we don't consider this particle uh, rather you can think about this amount of energy is being ejected as uh, radiations or electromagnetic radiations uh, let me see if i have missed any question uh, from maninder okay is the there was one question where is asking about the velocity of deuterium there is a particular problem in lecture number 6 that he has referred to is the velocity of deuterium equal to velocity of light uh, i am not sure exactly what question that you means exactly what is the query in this particular case I went to the lecture video and the particular instant that you are referring to there I can see I am solving a problem uh, involving the energy balance and uh, momentum balance and uh, of course the energy has to be conserved and the particular problem that I was referring to there the total momentum is zero on the left hand side so momentum has to be zero on the right hand side and there are two elements so the moment magnitude of momentum for both of them as the summation of their momentum is zero so both of them will have equal magnitude of momentum but acting in opposite directions and one of them is a photon which doesn't have mass so its energy has to be measured in terms of uh, its uh, frequency and we can often visualize this to have a uh, velocity of uh, sound as we are talking about a photon photons moves with the velocity of sound and deuterium is not necessary to move with the velocity of sound its energy level will depend upon the total kinetic energy content because it has some real mass and so whatever is the total energy content of the deuterium you know the mass of a deuterium uh, particle and uh, so using that just uh, plain half m uh, v square and you can calculate the mass of or uh, sorry the velocity of that deuterium and uh, the last question that I can identify uh, uh, what happens to the neutron causing non-fission reaction the mass number is not conserved on LHS and RHS. Now the instant that you have referred to there I have not found any nuclear reaction but in nu generally in, in nu any nuclear reaction the mass number has to be conserved. If I have written anything like that please correct that uh, because the instant that you have referred to there is no reaction. Uh, I am talking about something else in lecture 6 but in any nuclear reaction there are a few quantities that has to be conserved we know that the atomic number is not conserved but the mass number that is the total number of nucleons that has to be conserved because it is either uh, the protons getting converted to neutrons or neutrons getting converted to protons or the uh, it is possible that some outside particle like a neutron is coming in and so there is uh, that is getting absorbed in the uh, reaction during a non sorry in the nucleus during a non-fission capture or maybe the nucleus is getting broken into two particles and also a few other neutrons like in fission but the mass number has to be conserved as well as the total energy also has to be conserved during nuclear reaction that is one uh, the most important difference with the conventional reactions that is we can't treat mass and energy separately we have to treat mass and energy together and uh, that's why uh, we generally convert all mass in terms of energy by using the concept of rest mass. Rest mass is, uh, say, like the deuterium was there in the previous problem. So we know the mass of deuterium. So the rest in uh, energy of deuterium will be half mc square. The m is that mass and uh, c is the velocity of sound. That is the rest energy. And so whenever you are talking about any mass, we convert that to corresponding rest energy by using this half mc square. And it can also have its own kinetic energy. So the total energy content of any particle will be this rest energy or mass equivalent to, sorry, energy equivalent to the rest mass and the kinetic energy, the summation of these two. And uh, after converting all the mass to corresponding uh, rest energy or energy equivalent rest mass, then 
we apply the conservation of energy principle so both energy and mass number must be conserved during any nuclear reaction actually there are if you other quantities also that remains conserved this being a very elementary level course on nuclear power generation i have not mentioned about that but there is concept of baryon number lepton number like the pauli's exclusion principle that was mentioned why there is production of neutrino or anti neutrino during um, this beta minus or beta plus uh, reactions those can be explained using the concept of conservation of baryon numbers or lepton numbers etc but those are not part of this course because this is an elementary level course only for uh, the purpose of this course at least the energy and mass number that has to be conserved now i can see now there are several other questions uh, firstly good afternoon to all of you uh, uh let me try to take the questions from the panel i think i am having some issues in my video please continue with that uh, there i think there will be three live sessions and uh, uh harsh is asking can you use the semi empirical formula to calculate binding energy uh no that is not suggested whenever you are trying to calculate the binding energy take the exact value of mass for uh, the involved nucleus or rather when you will be having the exact mass for the nucleus that you are dealing with and you already know the mass of protons and neutrons so uh, calculate the binding energy using the difference don't use any kind of semi empirical formulas because it is not a complicated cal calculation the mass of protons and neutrons are very standard you just need to have authenticate information about the mass of the nucleus that you are dealing with that's all okay harsh is also asking about what is thermal hydraulics thermal hydraulics is just a combination of term thermal and hydraulics means we are talking about an analysis involving heat transfer as well as fluid flow that we call thermal hydraulics Uh, separately we can have fluid flow analysis we can have heat transfer analysis but particularly when you are talking about the nuclear reactors or uh, some high pressure equipments high temperature equipments we are talking about both together the heat transfer behavior is governed by the fluid flow behavior similarly the fluid flow behavior is also governed by heat transfer so both are coupled with each other and uh, so therefore thermal hydraulic is the term that is we use com to get who is in those kind of cases well harsh you are also asking about what is the procedure to get admission in bark i truly don't know but generally bark uh, conducts their exams uh, written exams or interviews periodically so you have to keep track from their website for this efficiency i am taking the questions from harsh only because there are several uh, questions i am coming to other students also how efficient is a nuclear power plant the nuclear power plant you have to understand that it is nothing but a conventional rankine cycle only the difference between a coal based thermal power plant and nuclear power plant is in, in case of a coal based power station you are producing energy by burning the coal whereas in a nuclear power plant you are producing energy because of the fission but after you, the energy has been produced that energy will be taken uh, or will be absorbed in boiling water and that water Uh, which will get which will partially get converted to steam that will run a rankine cycle and that steam will go to the steam turbine to produce energy so the efficiency uh, is of the power production process is similar to a coal based power station but if you think about from energy conversion point of view of course the amount of energy that we can uh, get from a particular quantity of uh, nuclear fuel is much much higher some 10 to the some 5 to 6 or 7 order higher then any coal based power station and uh, therefore uh, this uh, efficiency of the overall thing will be more but uh, efficiency of the rankine cycle will be very similar uh, i can see a comment from or question from jyesh shah uh, you have talked about question number 14 in assignment 2 i have answered kinetic energy and the answer is wrong correct answer was kinetic
okay uh, sorry for this uh, the correct so sir in this type of questions how should we answer since this email uh, small difference okay in uh, this kind of question sometimes uh, if you are having this kind of things please let us know by uh, writing in the portal we shall be taking personal care about these things and also particular not always during assignments but during the uh, exams we take personal care to avoid this kind of things you will uh, you will not be penalized for this and we shall also try to be pro we shall also be trying to provide the solutions very soon maninder uh, 3 into 1019 atoms per cc that will be 3 into 10 to the power 19 atoms per cc because number of atoms in one cubic uh, uh, in a cubic centimeter that is extremely high that is of the order of this 10 to the power 19 if you uh, have still any problem you can write to me at my uh, mail id dnbasu@iitg.ac.in you can from, find from the website of iit guwahati as well yash has also okay uh, any further question uh, here that i have missed Okay, Josh has asked. Alpha particle is a helium nucleus and beta is electron. So, is it possible there is a pure proton rays? Mm. I am not uh, getting this. But if you are talking about only proton, proton is extremely unstable. Proton can't stay in open nucleus. And uh, so, just like neutrons, also neutrons is. Uh, Free, free neutron you will never get neutron has uh, itself has extremely small half life and a neutron gets broken into a proton and an electron and uh, similarly pure proton also can't stay it has uh, in open environment so pure proton ray kind of thing i am not sure at least in not in nature Uh, Shatham has asked the energy of beta electron is of the order of uh, MeV. Is not uh, can't they be trapped as atomic electron? Now the energy level of the beta electron depends upon particularly the reaction that you are talking about. How much energy is possible to be trapped? They can be trapped as atomic electron, but not guaranteed. Like the example I was talking about that beta decay, the beta. Minus particle that is the electron that comes out, not guaranteed that that will be trapped in the um, in the orbits of that particular uh, atom itself. Its energy content may be sufficient to go outside the cover the zone of that particular electron may get trapped in somewhere else. Whereas uh, the electron from some other uh, neighboring atom may come to fill up the void in this one, but ultimately the entire material has to be electrically neutral. and just the cold fusion uh, i am not fully uh, uh, at this moment i am not ready to respond to this it will not be covered in this course because we shall be having just one module on fusion which will be more giving a um, resp or giving a overall idea about the technology why is it is different from fission what are the primary kind of fusion reactions and uh, very brief coverage about the fission reactors for this so i am actually happy that there are quite a few students are participating and asking very interesting questions very good questions which you don't often get during such kind of uh, live sessions i am having some uh, issues with my camera actually whenever i am switching uh, to that youtube stream to see your comments uh, my video is getting switched off because of my uh, device that i am using uh, but if any of you have still any question please uh, write to me uh, now i shall wait uh, a few more minutes to respond to your comments and as mentioned earlier there will be a couple of more live sessions we always prefer to have live classes this pandemic is not allowing us to have uh, live classes even here at our own institution also we are hoping to be soon back to the live classes because that is the zone or that is the place where we can have i to i contact we can have uh, very cordial discussion 
and we can respond to your comments uh, in a much better way like here i am talking in front of primarily a blank screen and i don't know whether uh, you are at all getting convinced with my answers or not but at least in a mooks kind of course that is the only option that we have okay shatam the notification of the next live session uh, will be provided quite soon but i guess it will be sometimes in the middle of march the date is yet to be decided but uh, generally we shall be having one in the middle of march and one sometimes in early april or uh, middle of april uh, rugby well uh, means once all the 12 modules are completed so if uh, that's all the comments uh, if any of you have any more comment please write within next one minute <coughs> sorry okay vikash uh, you are asking about energy production fusion it is not recent the phenomenon of fusion is known to the scientists for long and also uh people have been able to generate energy from fusion several years back and fusion uh, if can be controlled then it may provide a solution to the uh, power problem of the entire world because it can produce uh, even several orders higher amount of energy compared to fission but problem is the controlling the fusion reaction because you will see when i shall be talking about fusion whenever you are talking about fusion we are talking about extremely high temperature extremely high magnetic field and uh, none of the common uh, commercial level materials are able to sustain that for long period of time that's why fusion is still restricted to laboratory scale or some very much experimental reactors but commercial level fusion reactors are still uh, something of future that is still not there fusion is the reaction <coughs> sorry fusion is the reaction that goes on inside the stars and uh, that's but uh, uh, that is something uncontrolled in a way uh, once we are able to control the fusion reaction of course it will be a uh, huge amount of energy source but we have to wait not mainly to know the technology but mainly to understand how we can control this at a commercial scale yeah josh it is a good question how is that free neutron free neutron there are two ways means whenever you are writing about reactions you are starting with a neutron plus something else to have the reaction but that free neutron either that is being produced by the previous step of reaction like whenever you are talking with the fission reaction it is not that just one fission happens there are several fission happens in several cycles and you must have seen that in during every fusion sorry every fission there are two or three more neutrons that are produced and what will happen to, uh, to those neutrons those neutrons are all fast neutrons they have high energy level they also go through more level of moderation comes to a thermal level and they also can induce further fission reaction so that can be the source of uh, neutron and other source which is generally required to initiate the reaction at the very uh, first step <coughs> we can have commercial neutron generators where the neutrons have to be produced the neutron doesn't come from atmosphere it is something like uh, starting your uh, say starting your motorcycle there uh, you must have learned ic engines so there we use the kick or maybe the auto start to initiate the first spark to run the engine and once you have started the engine then the engine itself will have, will be sufficient to sustain that operation by producing repeated sparks it is somewhat similar means we have to supply neutron from some external source to start it and there are commercial neutron generators available and once the reaction has started there sufficient number of neutrons will be produced and rather our challenge will be more to control that because you have we have talked about the multiplication factor and reactivity also earlier right and we know that the number of neutrons uh, available in at the beginning of one generation should be equal to the number of neutrons available at the beginning of the next generation as well in order to have a critical reactor in order to maintain a multiplication factor of 1 it is more than 1 like 
commonly uh, during every fission we get three or four free neutrons produced and uh, out of this uh, the other three that has to be removed to ensure that only one will be able to participate in the next fission reaction otherwise the number of reactions will keep on increasing from one generation to the next to the next just what happens in any controlled case like in a nuclear a nuclear bomb so uh, the once the reaction has started neutrons will be available there we don't have to worry about the sources of neutron rather we have to worry about how to control the number of neutrons in every generation but you are correct uh, neutrons being unstable we can't get the neutron freely from atmosphere to produce it it is extremely unstable i can't remember the exact value but the half life of neutron is of the order of milliseconds and uh, so a free neutron can't survive that neutron once we have we have to produce from some external source and once it is produced it is actually within 10 to the power minus uh, to 10 to minus 12 seconds it can participate in reaction before it breaks <clears throat> okay guys uh, any more question if there are no more questions then uh, maybe we can wind up this session thanks to all of you for <coughs> participating in this session and hopefully we will get similar level of participation to from all of you during the future live sessions as well keep sending your comments uh, this is uh, a very interesting course uh, which is very much different from the other courses that you are uh, doing as a part of your ug level curriculum or maybe the any other courses that uh, may be there uh maninder i have mentioned that week number 2 question 14 uh, i shall be uh, uh, taking a look at this and you will not be penalized unfairly i will instruct my ts to look into this and uh, coordinate with the uh, npdl office to look into this so thanks a lot guys i am taking a break then we shall be meeting again in uh, maybe in a month time or less than that for the live session thank you very much